In this video, I'm going to show you how I spotted a scam on a popular buying and selling app. I'm going to teach you the red flags that I identified and how to avoid them. And away we go. Hey guys, it's Josh with No Dad No Problem featuring how to's, interviews, and reviews you can use. So I'm always looking to upgrade my gear uh, so I can get better quality audio and video on these videos for you guys, but I am operating on a budget. So I often look at secondhand markets. Uh, and when I opened up my Let Go app and saw someone was offering a $500 digital camera for free, well, I had to investigate. You've heard the old phrase, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Well, it was. And I'm going to show you the listings, the communications, the internet searches, and more that I did that made it obvious to me that this was a scam. So let's cut to it. So the first thing we have is the listing. If you look at the listing, you can see that it says, My uncle is willing to give this to someone who's going to make good use of it. All you have to do is convince me that you need it, and you're going to make good use of it, then I'll link you up with him. So this is our first red flag. If the uncle was giving it away, why wouldn't he just list the item himself? Also, who would be giving away such a very high dollar item like that? So I decided to prod around the user's profile a bit. By clicking on the user's name, we can see that the user, Lisa Wright, has not verified their let go account through Google, Facebook, or any of the other means. When I clicked on their sold listings, they hadn't sold anything before. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are a scammer, but it is a point to keep in mind when we're talking about what you are more likely to see from a scammer. In short, scammers aren't likely to have a history full of sales and reviews. They are generating throwaway accounts. So I decided to search using Google and search the user's name along with Boolean logic that the results must return both Sydney, the town the user claimed to be from, and Iowa, the state the user claimed to live in. No direct results showed up. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean a scam, as many people have very low-profile online lives, and a lack of data to refute my point doesn't mean that the point itself is true. But now we have a dubious listing trying to give away stuff for someone else from an unverified account with no proof that this person actually exists. I wanted to see where this was all going to go, so I messaged about it, exchanged a few messages back and forth, and gave over my cell phone number so her uncle could text message me. So then the uncle text messaged me with a number showing a New York State area code, saying, My name is Christopher. I got your cell from my niece that you're interested in the Canon M50. He dispenses with some pleasantries and I was courteous back, but this was going nowhere. So finally, I asked how the exchange would work. First, he asks if I know anyone in New York that could pick it up. Now, this is another bit of a red flag for me. Do I know anyone in New York? New York is a huge state. It's not like it's just the city. He didn't specify what city he was in, just if I knew anyone in New York. So this goes back to red flag number one. Why would someone posting from a small town in Iowa be trying to help their uncle in New York, a state with a population of over 19 million people, find a deserving recipient? This just doesn't add up. So I let him know that I didn't know anyone in New York, even though I do, but so he said he'd have to ship it to me if I were willing to cover the cost of shipping. Since I was 99% sure this is a scam at this point, I gave him the address of the local police station to calculate the shipping. He comes back and tells me that the shipping is $37. Now, I've shipped a lot of items in my time selling on eBay and Amazon, and I know that a maximum 5 pounds non-oversized box would not cost $37 to ship. It should be about half of that. So I ask him for his PayPal address. He gives me his PayPal address, but also pay close attention that he told me to send the money using friends and family. This is a common tactic of scammers. Friends and family will not charge a fee to the receiver of the transfer, but it should never be used for any sort of payment of deliverable goods, because there is no fraud protection for the buyer. 
if you use friends and families and you get ripped off, PayPal will say that you shouldn't have used friends and family and that there's nothing they can do. So now that I have his email address, I decided to give that a look in Google. Searching his email address gives no results, and that's fine, but it looked like a name to me. So I wondered what would happen if I removed the one from the end, as well as the yahoo.com, and I made the logical leap that Kip Corer Collins was the name. Suddenly, I had results. First is a nice-looking gentleman who is studying at a college in Kenya. Now, I've never been to Kenya, but I'm pretty sure that it is nowhere near New York. So I kept going. And I found a Twitter account uh, with the name of Collins Kip Corer, also from Nairobi, Kenya. Now, at this point, I am 99.9% .9 sure that this is a scam, but I wanted one last piece of proof to settle it in my mind. So I set up the PayPal transfer using friends and family as he requested. Now, if you look at this, you'll see the transfer amount plus a service fee for $1.85. This service fee is only charged for international transfers. New York is not international for me, so there should have been no transfer fee. And like that, I texted him that I was uncomfortable with this whole exchange, that I did not believe he was truly offering it, and I wouldn't fall for his scam. A few more messages were exchanged that I won't show, because they have some uh, language that I choose not to use on this channel included. All right, guys, so there you have it. To me, there were seven major things that jumped out at me that just screamed fraud. Number one, they were giving away an expensive item for free. Number two, the person who posted the listing had an unverified account. Number three, someone else was giving it away and that other person was not in the local area. Number four, no results searching Google for the name and the city that the person who posted it allegedly lived in. Number five, the email address, when I finally got that and I searched that up, had no results. Uh, number six, they wanted the money sent via PayPal friends and family, which removes buyer fraud protection. And number seven, PayPal wanted an international transfer fee, which means that the person wasn't in the United States. Now, there are lots of good people out there, and they far outweigh the number of scammers, but you still have to be on guard. Keep yourself protected. Don't randomly buy from people online. Use legitimate sites like eBay that have fraud protection services. Uh, meet up in person when possible, in a public place like a bank parking lot or a police station parking lot. Don't just send money to a stranger. And if something feels off, back out of the situation. Uh, a couple of the things that we saw, you know, an unverified account, that doesn't mean that it's automatically a scam. But when added into all the other factors, it just became more and more clear. If this video has helped you in any way, please consider leaving us a like. Tell us in the comments down below about any scammers that you've encountered. Subscribing to our channel helps our channel grow, and ringing the bell will give you notifications when we upload new content. Be well, be blessed, be loved, and have the best day ever.